You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Wing Gamers. Have you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Echo. Ooh, this is gonna be a good one. I think it is anyway. <laughs> but anyway, guys, the last the last place we left off was we had just woken up in the ho in the hotel room with Jenna after having a really freaking creepy nightmare about uh, Janice. And Mr. Bronson and an un, some unknown figure on the side of the road getting hit by their vehicle. It's really, really creepy. So, man, this this place is just full of evil. <laughs> just horrible, awful things happening to everyone. But anyway, guys, please sit back and enjoy and let me entertain you. And let's jump right into it. Alarm chain, you are up. Okay. <clears throat> she gives my rump a little pat and my heavy tail thumps against the mattress. I know you took one last night, but I should probably take a shower first. Gotta, you know, get all the eye goop off me. That's so offensive to you. Oh. She cants her head in my direction, setting her phone back down. Thank you for being so considerate to those around you, Chase. We appreciate it, truly. I grunt idly and slide myself off to the other side of the bed. I'll meet you down at the diner. Gonna walk down there this time. The reception's been kind of weird this morning, but I'll text TJ your order. Thank you. I give her a little thumbs up and she smiles, leaning over the edge of the bed and begin rifling through her suitcase. When I step out about 20 minutes later, I notice that my phone is flashing with that new notification light. I click on it and notice one new message. It's Misha. Your BF is fucking... Ooh, she's fucking shit up hitting Clint. Get down here too. Get down here too. Get down here to Jasmine Street now. Oh, shit. God damn it, Leo! I sent out a big group text last night updating the group on what had happened with Misha. Everyone got back to me, except Leo, who never responded. It showed that he'd read the message, though, so I didn't question it at the time. I quickly grabbed my keys and head out. Oh, fuck. I make, sure to park at I make sure to park at least a quarter mile down the street, past the intersection onto Jasmine. From there, I make my way on foot, huffing my way down the gravel road. As fast as I... As I fast walk, I notice that there's little puddles everywhere, but there's no sign. But there was no rain last night. At least if there was, I was sleeping too deeply to notice. I can still practically smell the smoke of the bonfire from yesterday as I draw closer. I imagine they probably let it burn down to ashes last night. That group not seeming like the real fire safety type. Fuck you! A voice cracks through the silence, past a burnt-out trailer down in the alley. It's shrill and raspy and a violent clash that sounds like garbage cans getting knocked over soon follows. It's unmistakably Clint. There's another voice that follows, this one lower. It's quiet and threatening, but I can't quite make out what he's saying. Something about making Clint's life hell? There's an accent to the way there's an accent to the way the R's are being rolled, and I realize quickly it's Leo. His English always gets worse when he's emotional. I creep up beside a shed full of what looks like copper tubing, wondering if it's too late to turn back. Peering around the corner I can see Clint knocked on his ass, a can of half eaten beans spilled all over his crotch. He's almost completely covered in trash. Jeremy's also next to him, holding his arm and looking like he's about to start bawling. No sign of Misha or Heather, though. Where is he, huh? You gonna tell me? Oh. Eat shit! I don't know where your fucking friend is! That's bullshit! Leo snaps back, Clint flinching some as he slides himself further behind the trash, as he, trash can he knocked over earlier. A hypodermic needle is dangling from his thigh, probably poking him through his jeans. He doesn't seem to notice, his eyes flicking around wildly as if searching for something. You won't be so loud soon! Leo growls, tail raised and bristling. It's strange to see him flash his teeth like this. Leo getting truly angry was always a rarity growing up, the wolf usually being the one trying to pacify everyone else. Whatever his reasons, he's not having any of Clint's shit today. He snatches the ring tail by the scruff of his neck, Clint thrashing for a second before Leo tightens his grip. Jeremy looks up at the two of them, his eyes like saucers. I know you all tried to rob Carl's place, but it didn't work, huh? Carl got spooked and ran off, and you said you were going to handle him. Well, how'd you handle him? Something like how about how something like how I'm about to handle you if you don't tell me? God damn it, Leo. There goes, there goes Misha's cover. So much for trying to do this the subtle way. I feel like I should step out from my hiding spot and say something, to intervene, to do fucking anything to stop this before it escalates. I just stand there, saying and doing nothing. Clint rises just enough to clutch at Leo's wrist, his long, unkempt fingernails digging into the white fur.
I didn't see him, I swear. I ain't seen him at all, not since last week. And we ain't done none of that robbing shit from his place. House is fucking cursed. His bulging eyes shift to Jeremy, as if waiting for confirmation for the chubby Fennec. He's met with only silence. Leo's nostrils flare, shaking his head. You know what happened! Fuck, I know you know. God damn it, don't lie to me! You, you, you don't know shit! Sounds like someone's been lying to you. And I think I know who. This is very clearly not what Leo wants to hear. Jow's pulling back and exposing more of his teeth in a silent snarl. I need to find him. I need to fix this, and you two sacks of shit are gonna help me. The wolf throws Clint back down atop Jeremy, the two colliding with an audible thud. Jeremy yelps, clutching his arm again. They must have really heard it earlier. Psst! There's a sharp whisper from a broken-down RV to my left. Through the dusty, broken windows, I can see the familiar outline of a pair of ridiculously large ears. Misha. I crouch down, clutching my tail in my paws so it doesn't so it doesn't flop around behind me. Quietly, I make my way to the floor to the door and step inside, careful not to step on any broken glass on my way in. The smell inside is awful, and despite the arid climate, it's surprisingly damp and moldy in here. Misha is hunkered down behind an overturned cabinet, glancing briefly at me before returning his gaze to the scene unfolding outside. I'm fucked. He mutters. And so is your friend. All thanks to him of all people. Misha points to the wolf outside, whose focus now whose focus whose focus of attention has shifted to Jeremy now. I didn't know he would react like this. I whisper back. Yeah, I thought you were just gonna call the cops on me. I didn't expect him I didn't expect this to go from Goody Two Shoes Echo Gang. Misha frowns deeply, and I notice a heavy pipe wrench clutched in his small paws. Whoa, are you gonna try hitting him with that? Misha swallows. He was asking about me by name earlier. Jeremy said he hadn't seen me, and then Leo punched him in the arm so hard he hit the dirt. This is, uh, just in case. You better not have fucking hurt him, you fat fuck. Another cry of pain. I think Leo hit him again, but it's hard to tell through, the sm through my spot at the window. The bat's gaze shifts back over to me. What the fuck are you still doing here? Go out there and stop him, you dumb shit. Misha whispers harshly, his raspy voice intense. Uh, oh! Right, but... But what? I sigh, rubbing my palm over my face. We need to find Carl, but this isn't any way to go about doing it. Nothing. I'll do it. Good. You're a schizo, but I never really took you as a sort to be down with torture and shit. Part of me is kind of happy to see Clint get his ass kicked, though. No, oh, yeah, fucker deserves a deck to the jaw every now and then, but I've, but I've counted three. A flicker of a nervous smile crosses the bat's face. Yeah, not cool. Thanks. He says that last bit so quietly, I almost miss it. The bat's already back to smushing, to smushing his nose against the dusty window, trying to get a good look at what's happening. His brow furrows. Wait, where'd he go? His ears perk and his yellow eyes widen. Oh, piss. It takes me a second, but I hear it too. Footsteps. And they're getting closer. Misha scrambles to the back of the RV, opening the half-busted bathroom door and jamming himself inside. Don't let him see me! What? Oh, shit. It's just Leo. Calm down. I take a deep breath and make my way to the door of the RV, pushing it open. It proceeds to promptly fall right off its rusted hinges, landing in the dirt below. Leo stands about five feet away, his look of anger, sh his look of anger shifting to surprise. Chase? Fuck, what are you doing here? I'm not sure what to say. Behind Leo, I can see Clint and Jeremy slumped against the side of the mobile home. I decided to turn the question back to him, sawing back the lump that had crawled its way up my throat. Mate, Leo, what the hell are you doing here? We had a plan! Yeah, well, so do I. I'm gonna fix this, and you don't have to worry about a thing, okay? Leo, we're in this together. We're not kids anymore. Look, I know you've been away a while, yeah? But these guys... He points back to Jeremy and Clint. They just hurt people. Always have. That's all they do. Just a bunch of... Just a bunch of gay-bashing speed freaks. And now they've crossed the line. Leo steps up, placing his large paws on my shoulders. I flinch. He notices, then a hurt expression crosses his muzzles. He draws back. I'm gonna fix this, Chase. Trust me, please. Leo, I don't know. This is kind of fucked. You're just gonna get yourself into more trouble, and I don't want that. Look, it's just like we had talked about last night. Everything's gonna be okay. Wait, what? Leo, you and I didn't talk last night. I haven't seen or spoken to you since Wednesday. Leo just stares at me, visibly confused. He looks down to his feet, then back up again. No? I was watching Carl's place and you came over. 
I told you about this, about the need for action here, and you agreed with me. I blink up at him. After the conversation with Misha, I went straight to bed. I definitely didn't go back all the way to Carl's. It was probably just a dream or something. Hmm. Don't think so. He sucks his tongue. He sucks his tongue for a second before speaking again. Have you seen Misha? Gotta ask him a few questions. Uh, no. I lie. Ugh! I'll track him down, canine powers and what, and what have you. He gesticulates with a loose swirl of his paw before letting it fall limply back at his side. Hopefully Misha took a shower recently. Might do that thing where we ask him a few questions one at a time and make sure their answers match up. I read about something like that in a spy novel once. And if they don't? Lil looks at me as if he wasn't expecting me to ask that question. Oh, well, let's hope they do, yeah? For their own good. He nods sagely, seemingly trying to ignore the fact that I'm staring at him like he's missing a few bolts. When I don't say anything, he just sighs, turning to head back in the direction of Clint and Jeremy. All right, you should head back to the motel and text the rest of the gang. I'll keep you updated. And if you see the... As Leo rounds the side of one of the nearby sheds, something large, brown, and hairy juts forth and strikes him in the waist. He recoils, staggering to his knee with a gasp. Just as he looks to see what's hit him, a second blow strikes him square in the muzzle. I see his whole head rattle, his face contorted in pain as he falls flat on his ass, trying to scoot away from the source of the assault. Oh, fuck! Leo! I run up to help him just as a huge bear emerges from around the shed. Leo's a big guy, but this man is nearly a foot taller than even him. Scabs coat his matted fur, and a rank smell of stale beer and musk lasts from him like cheap perfume. There's something horrible about him, and not just his acrid odor and lesion-dotted visage. His eyes are... empty. Empty not in a physical way, but there's something about his appearance that can't quite be put into words. A combination of factors that make him look like he just walked straight out of a nightmare. Brian! You're, you're here! Oh, sorry. Brian, you're, you're here! Shut up, man! I'm oh, sorry, Jeremy. God, I'm getting these people mixed up because their font, their font color is the same. Brian. God, this is fucking Brian? No wonder Misha wanted to try the subtle approach. Ah, ah what, what the hell? Brian chuckles down at Leo, and the first thing I'm struck by is how high-pitched his voice is. It's like this strange combination of a valley girl lisp mixed with a hint of helium. <laughs> what you doing, boy? What you... He kicks at Leo's leg, the wolf grunting in pain. Doing? He smiles, pleased with himself in his little ambush. You know this is my turf, right? You hurting my boys wasn't a kind thing. Where's Carl? Leo shouts, covered in dirt as he scoots back along the ground. Brian continues to approach him with that same smile, several of his teeth missing or half rotted to corn kernel like corn kernel like husks. He seems to ignore Leo's question, grabbing at the wolf's pant leg while Leo kicks fruitlessly at him. I gotta do something. Brian hasn't seen me yet. For some reason, the first thing that flashes through my mind is, what would Jenna do? Next thing I know, I'm walking toward both of them. I see Jeremy in the distance, his eyes going wide. He mouths one word. Don't. Hey! Hey! Stop it! Right now! The bear stops what he's doing, looking at me with an indiscernible expression. Oh god, he's huge. It, your behavior is getting real inappropriate. <laughs> What? <laughs> oh my god, what are you, his mother? Oh my god. Oh no, you're being inappropriate. <laughs> well, fuck me, it's you. <laughs> Duke was right. You've been skulking around here these past weeks, haven't you? Leo growls, taking advantage of the distracted Brian by kicking him square in the nads as hard as he can. At least, that's where it looks like he was aiming for. Instead... It hits his thigh, and the bear stumbles back with a panted, squ pain squeal. It's enough to give Leo some time to get back on his feet. I grab my keys from my pocket. My car's still parked a hell of a long ways away. I have no idea where Leo parked his van, or if he even drove in the first place. Come on, Leo, let's go! No. He balls his, he balls his paws into fists. He knows where Carl is. This is our only goddamn chance, Chase. Get out of here. Get safe. I blanch as he begins rushing the bear, dropping his shoulder for a football tackle. There's no way, no way in hell Leo can take on this guy. Leo, goddammit! The impact is hard. Two heavy bodies colliding with an audible smack. The two topple down upon a wooden pallet covered in loose metal pipes. Brian squeals again, thrashing like a spider that's just been spritzed, spritzed with bug spray. The bear scratches at Leo, but Leo hits him hard in the face. Again and again, pummeling the previously grinning mug into a twisted visage of agony. Brian Squeals turned outright screams like he's gone completely feral. Jesus, Leo! 
I said go! Brian jerks forward, sinking his yellow teeth into Leo's shoulder. The wolf's eyes go wide from the shock of pain. It's stunning him still as he's well as he's held within the bear's jaws. He tries grabbing with, at his gnarly muzzle, but the bear only clamps down harder. He can see his nostrils dilating as his acrid breath puffs out in quick, enraged bursts. No! I've never won a fight in my goddamn life, but again, I have to do something. I run up and aim to kick Brian square in the head. Anything get him off Leo. It's a glancing blow, but it's enough. I see his jaw unclench. Just as my foot catches and I trip over both of them, spray, splaying chest first into the dirt. Oof! Leo's gonna owe me so many beers after this. I cough out sputters of dust and dry grass, rolling over onto my back. I see a flash of fur and there's another couple of thuds. And those eyes again. The empty ones. Brian's leering over me now, his face puckered like he's just sucked on something sour. Leo's rolled over on his side, retching as he clutches his gut. He must have gotten socks in the stomach and hard. The bear says nothing as he places his large paws around my neck. His expression doesn't, doesn't so much change as it cracks into an increasingly wide smile. Then a knee in my, on my chest. I can't move. I can't breathe. My heart begins to race, feeling my own pulse begin to throb. I can feel his thumbs dig down where my jugular is. I gasp for breath, blood vessels beginning to pop. My eyes feel like they're about to squeeze out of my head. He knows what he's doing. So do you. Ah, get away from him! Thud. Leo slams his whole body against the bear again. It takes all his force to budge him, but once he's down, he's stunned for a while. I gasp for breath, clutching up, clutching at my neck and scurrying back behind Leo. Brian's on his paws and knees now, panting with sick, wheezy breaths. Leo scrambles up to his feet and kicks the bear in the ribs. He barely budges, but Leo keeps at it, strike after strike. He's swearing under his breath, a string of words in his native tongue flowing forth from between gritted teeth. I'm still having trouble catching my breath, my whole head throbbing and, my whole head throbbing and lights popping in front of my eyes. Brian yanks on the, cu on the cuff of Leo's jeans and pulls the wolf down with him. He crawls on top, taking Leo's head in one meaty paw and banging it against the ground with a thud. I can see him squeezing down, a little desperately flailing to get him off. He reaches for one of the pipes on the nearby pallet, but Brian catches him before he can get a hold on it. The bear pins both of his wrists above him, grinning in a sort of hazy rage. I run up, trying to push him off, but it's like trying to move a boulder. A single elbow strikes me, and I go flying back. It feels like I just got hit by a goddamn car. I hear Leo scream in pain, followed by a short gurgling noise. I've never heard Leo sound like this in my life. It's horrible. Get off! Ugh. Another cry. I gotta do something. Maybe I will! As I push myself up to my elbows, my head starts to spin, throbbing in my skull intensifying. I can finally see what's happening. Brian's still got Leo pinned on the ground. He has his knee up on his chest and is pressing down with all his weight. The wolf heaves, trying to free his hands to no avail. A more primal look crosses his eyes, his toes curling down into the dirt and his paws bawling into fists. Brian leans down for just a moment to grin, at, to grin at him when Leo snaps. His white fangs sink down into the brown muzzle of the bear. He's biting hard, and I can practically see the cartilage tearing. It catches him off guard enough to let Leo get his paws free again, which he promptly uses to pummel the bear's noggin. Each punch is a short, knuckle-heavy blow, not letting Brian get the opportunity to recover. The upper hand lasts only a couple of seconds, however, as the, large, as the bear swings his fist blindly connects, and, connects Leo, and connects right at Leo's temple. Another strike catches the edge of his shirt, and Brian tears it away like it's paper. His eyes shut and he crumples back in a manner that I'm sure that I'm sure means he's unconscious. But he keeps moving, pushing himself out from under Brian and trying to crawl away. Come back here, boy! The shout is loud, and Leo begins to crawl faster. Just as he pushes himself to his feet, Brian tackles him back tackles him back onto all fours again, hitting him in the back of the head. Once he stopped moving, Brian pushes his face into the dirt. He rests his, he rests his chest against Leo's back, breathing heavily down on his neck. F fuck off! Leo's eyes begin to dart around rapidly as he realizes what's happening. The emasculating position is very much intentional. Two paws come down and grasp around the back of Leo's neck, huge fingers pressing down in his airways. STOP! I call out, my voice hoarse. I push myself back up for what feels like the hundredth time. If I can get to the pipes on that pallet, maybe I can stop this. I take one step and nearly collapse. What the hell happened to me? I close my eyes for a moment, trying to catch my breath. That's when I hear the sound of pattering little feet scampering across the topsoil. Oh, God. Take this, bitch! Bam! The heavy metal of the wrench strikes Brian in the muzzle right as he turns around. A spray of blood splatters both Brian and the bat, the bear hobbling back before roaring in agony, two teeth falling from the front of his maw. His whole body quakes with rage. Misha! What are you doing? I'm sorry, that's Clint. What are you doing? What was that, that uh, backlog? What did that say? 
Misha's chest rises and falls in rapid succession. It's apparent his fight or flight responses are just kicking in. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. As Brian turns to face him, eyes wild, it looks like the ladder has taken hold. The bat fucking bolts, sprinting as fast as he can toward the exit of the trailer park and into the desert scrub beyond. Astonishingly, Brian is right behind him. He's way too fast for someone his size, and he screams like a banshee as he runs. There's a moment where Misha stumbles, and I'm sure that the bear is going to catch him, but he just dodges out of the way and keeps going. They run and run until I can't see them anymore, and an every silence falls upon the trailer park. I head over to Leo, taking him by the shoulder. The fur around his jowls is matted with dry blood, and his tail hangs between his legs, completely still. Leo, are, are you okay? Fuck. That's all he can say as he clutches his head. I agree with that sentiment. So close. Oh, man. Oh, man. Wow, what a... Oh, man, what a fucking intense fight. God, Brian was trying to fucking kill both of them. Mm. God, what a monster. Jesus. Gotta recover from that. Oh, okay, guys. Thank you so much for watching. This has been a rather intense episode of Echo. Jenna was only in this for a little bit, but man, I'm glad we took this route. Now we can uh, see what's... Uh, some of these uh, alternate little paths that are really, really detailed and completely divergent from the main from the main path that we took at the beginning of this uh, beginning of this series. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.